What's up guys, this is Jan for Chess24. The eighth round in the candidates has been played. That means the second half has started because it's 14 rounds total. And we're gonna take a look at the encounter between Fabiano Carana and Hikaru Nakamura, the two American superstars. Both have struggled a little bit in this tournament so far. Therefore, their matchup is not as highly anticipated as Batman vs Superman or other clashes of American heroes, but it still is a marquee matchup. Fabiano Carana drew all his games so far, seven draws after seven rounds, is gonna be looking for his first win, while Hikaru Nakamura lost two games, 1-1, one, one, is gonna be looking to get back to 50%. Here we see the head-to-head -head. Carana has struggled traditionally against Nakamura, only one win with five losses and 20 draws but he's gonna try to improve that score with white pieces. He goes for e4 as he has been all tournament and anybody who's played e4 in this tournament has faced e5, knight f3, knight c6 and after bishop b5, Nakamura, like so many others, employs the Berlin Wall. White players are sick of the main line with short castles. We've seen lots of 4d3 here in this candidates tournament and in previous super tournaments. When after bishop c5 the main line, white faces the choice which I've talked about in many a video already, short castles c3 or bishop takes c6. In this game Karana decides to go for the bishop takes c6 line which he's played not in this tournament, in this tournament he's preferred other lines so far, but very recently in Vaikanze in a super tournament against Sergei Kayakin. d takes c6, little tactical point, knight e5 doesn't work because of queen to d4, attacking f2. So white chooses something else. Traditionally in these structures white has tried to play slowly. Something like a3, castle kingside, get the pieces out and then prefer, prepare f4 some point way in the future. But things have changed. They have come up with more aggressive ideas and one of those we're gonna see in the game. Knight bd2 doesn't look that aggressive yet. But notice that white is not committing his king to anywhere just yet. Short castles, queen e2, and we already see maybe he's clearing the way to, for kingside, for queenside castling, which is an idea that you have to reckon with nowadays in this line. Queen e2 also covers f2, so now black has to do something about his e5 pawn, and he plays him move rook e8, which is part of his plan anyway, because the big problem black has in this position is what to do with his knight. It doesn't do very much on f6, so typically you want to regroup it Often d7, f8, e6 is the way for it to go. Sometimes it takes an even longer journey, d7, b8, c6. Sure, I've explained this in previous videos, but some of you might not have seen all my videos. Hard to believe. So rook e8, all theory, knight to c4, attacking the pawn, knight to d7, the knight starts his wonderful trip, and bishop to d2. This is the trendy move, once again, keeping the options open. Queenside castles, kingside castles, playing on the queenside, play on the king side, everything is still possible and black has to react or to prepare for all of those ideas. Nakamura plays the main move here, bishop to d6. Might look strange, but it makes a lot of sense. You have to cover the e5 pawn in order to shuffle your knight around. And also, if you want to go this way, you have to get the bishop out of the way so you can, sorry, arrow confusion, so you can push your c-pawn up the board. And here is the first slight surprise. I've strongly hinted at this already. Karana goes for queenside castles. This is not a surprise because of the nature of the position with the sharp attack, but the subtleties recently were that white should wait with his king in the center and push his pawns up the board first. We've seen a couple of games with h4. Vishiana was the first to play a similar idea. He started with g4. Hasn't found many followers, maybe because knight to f8 or even knight to b6 attacks this pawn immediately. But h4 has been very trendy and has been played by Karana himself in the game I mentioned against Kayakin, where he got a decent position, but in the end Kayakin defended as he often does. But of course Karana has studied this position very closely and he's decided you can start with queenside castles, keeping your options open on how to push these pawns and asking some slightly new questions to Hikaru Nakamura, who probably was better prepared for the move h4. For black, it's not an easy decision. He can go for one of the two knight routes that I've pointed out, c5 for example, looks very logical, but now that the game is going to come down to a race, 
you have to be very sure about what you're doing here. I'm sure Nakamura has done his homework here as well and he's decided that the best way is to meet this aggression with aggression. Go b5, chase this knight away. It should not take on d6 of course and it does very little from a5 when black would just go c5 and it's sort of out of bounds. <clears throat> just as I say, say this, I'm wondering, can't we try to tra trap the queen here with bishop g5 hoping for f6, knight c6 but bishop g5 can be well met by either knight f6 or bishop e7 when this still applies. So instead the knight does go to e3 which is more natural base from where it can hop into f5. Nakamura shows his aggressive intentions. He goes a5 clearly signaling he wants to push the pawns, these pawns up the board and orchestrate an, an attack against the white king which has committed to the queen side. It comes down to Tempi now the Respective plans are very clear and Karana has to decide how to conduct his attack on the king side. It looks like he's prepared an interesting idea. He starts with knight to f5, logical enough move. And after a4 he goes for the move bishop to g5. This is an idea I have not seen in this form earlier. He's actively trying to provoke f6 which is played in order to then retreat his bishop to e3, intending to now push his pawn up the board and he's created this mark for an attack on f6. He's willing to invest tempo and a half into it. I'm sure all of this is still homework. Nakamura decides to play actively with knight to c5, clearing the e6 square for his bishop to target this pawn. I'm not sure what improvements to suggest here. It comes down to very concrete analysis. Knight b6, knight to f8. I really am not sure. Knight to c5 was played, looks natural enough, and g4, not wasting any time, planning to go g5, also right now intending to recapture on f5 with the g-pawn, should he be given the chance. Nakamura goes bishop e6, targeting the a2-pawn, white should keep that, and therefore he defends it with king to b1, and he pushes b4, showing his intention to open the queen side immediately by playing b3. A3 normally doesn't accomplish very much because white just goes B3 and keeps the structure closed. Therefore B3 is the way to create some play. Karana does not bother thinking about defense here. This is a first come first serve sort of position. You have to hurry up. He goes G5 intending to open the G file after rook G1 to threaten G takes F6. No prices for guessing the next black move. B3 but now it's decision time for Fabiano Karana. I don't have any insight on this. I wouldn't be surprised if he was still familiar with this position and he knew that the best way to react to b3 is not to react to it. If you, for example, took here and now you played a3 trying to keep the queen side close, then after knight to a4, all of a sudden black has all sorts of nasty threats. Bishop a3 followed by knight c3, knight takes b2 followed by something taking on a3. Just a bad idea and should not be done under any circumstances. Karana does not do it. He goes rook g1, pursuing his own play. And his point is after b takes a2, king a1. This happened in the game. The king is actually quite well sheltered behind the enemy pawn, an idea we normally see in Sicilians after g6 and g takes h7 and black counters with g, king to h8, hiding behind this pawn. But of course the same principle applies here. The computer is not a big fan of b takes a2. It gives the move g6 hard move to make, weakening yourself on the king side where you're under attack, but maybe a better defense, still keeping the options open if you want to go b, c, b, a, a3 one day. And yes, yeah, some very computerish lines ensue, g, f6, queen, f6 and d4 with crazy complications, which the computer slightly likes for white, but maybe this was a better way to play because after b takes a2, king to a1, it turns out that it's hard for black to continue his attack. If he goes a3, white goes b3, no peace sacrifices on b3 work and therefore very hard to make progress. Nakamura first throws in bishop takes f5, gets rid of this scary knight. The problem with bishop f5 is after e f, white has some very appealing positional plans. Like knight to d2, bishop takes c5, knight to e4, dominating square for this knight now with his pawn on f5 and the black bishop would remain very passive. So if white ever accomplishes this, he is positionally winning, therefore black has to play extremely dynamically not to make that happen, not to allow that to happen. Nakamura starts with a3, of course, met by b3, and the idea 
he wanted to implement was to go knight to a6, planning to use the b4 square, most likely for the bishop. If you can manage to put the bishop here, give a check, king takes a2, knight b4, white would checkmate it, white would be checkmated very, very quickly. But of course, things are never so simple. The first move that came to my mind, at least, would be to play knight d2, intending to put the knight to e4 after bishop b4. This would be fantastic for white. But things aren't that simple, because black has a very strong e4, trying to use this diagonal from over here. And after knight takes e4, it goes rook takes e4, d e, bishop b5 check. Mission accomplished, and all of a sudden, black delivers checkmate. So, you, of course, should not allow that, and Karana is alert, plays a good move, plays a move c2 to c3, controlling the b4 square, thereby stopping any bishop b4s, and also blocking this diagonal, so there's not going to be any bishop e5 check anytime soon. This puts Nakamura in a very tough spot. His direct attacking plans have been parried, while white still has the very strong plan, knight to d2, knight to e4. Nakamura goes bishop f8, switching to defense, covering the g7 pawn, and Karana, of course, goes for this plan, knight d2, intending to put the knight on e4. Knight c5, once again, is more or less just losing because of takes knight e4. This is the absolute dream position white can get in these lines. The attack would crash through on the king's side very quickly. Nakamura instead tries to use some tricks to complicate matters. He goes f takes g5, when knight e4 was still very possible, but probably Karan disliked queen d5 with a counterattack against b3, and you don't want to go passive and play a move like queen c2, or even king takes a2 to join this diagonal. Not a great idea, even though white is still better after knight e4. But instead, Karan plays a simpler rook takes g5, taking the pawn back and opening the g-file, Nakamura had relied, well, I'm sure he understood he was in trouble, but the trick that f takes g5 included was to go knight c5 now, when bishop c5 is no good because if queen takes g5, this rook is under attack. The d3 pawn is under attack as well, so white needs a good idea here, and Karana comes through. He goes for the move rook to g3. This is a very clever move, vacating the g5 square, so this rook is no longer under attack, which once again makes bishop c5 a big, big threat. The tactical justification is that black cannot really take on d3. If queen takes d3, white takes and goes knight to e4, attacking the knight and threatening knight f6 check, winning in exchange if black tries to go for a counterattack, knight b2, then his pieces are just too passive and after rook dg1. The white attack will be decisive even without the queens. The threat of bishop h6, or some lines f6, is very, very hard to meet. Another problem is that knight takes d3 doesn't work because white just goes knight e4, and this knight is pinned and would drop. So nothing really works for black. He can't stay passive since bishop c5 is such a big threat. Therefore, Nakamura decides to go e4 at the very least, try to open the position up for his piece a little bit. Karana goes bishop takes c5. Once again, a nice tactical little point. e takes d3 is no good because of queen g4 when bishop c5 runs into queen g7 checkmate. Therefore, Nakamura had to recapture bishop takes c5, knight takes e4. Still a dream position for white. It's slightly better than the version with this pawn on e5, which only impeded the black pieces, but it's still trouble. Nakamura from far away had probably relied on a little trick. Bishop takes f2, trying to use the various pins in the position it turns out it does not really work because of queen takes f2, rook takes e4, trying to exploit this loose rook, but just rook g1, attacking g7 and attacking the rook. Well, after rook e7, white goes f6, and once again, the attack will be decisive. So that doesn't work, therefore black had to play a different move. He chose bishop d6, hitting this rook. The rook goes to the best square, rook h3. The problem for black is, Whenever he doesn't threaten anything, he's gonna get checkmated by simple improvements of the white position, queen h5, rook g1, f6. Long term, the white attack is unstoppable. So you gotta keep asking questions. Nakamura comes up with bishop e5, tending bishop takes c3 in some lines. For example, if white goes queen h5, which looks very logical, then black goes bishop takes c3, and if knight takes c3, queen to d4, all of a sudden, with massive counterplay, turns out that white is nothing better here than to make a draw. Rook c1, 
another hammer blow, rook to e1, distracting the rook. And white has to give a perpetual, something like this. But white is not forced to play the move queen h5, and Karana plays a stronger move. He plays d3 to d4, eliminating any bishop takes c3 trickery. He's rightly judged that this knight is solid enough even without support from this pawn. Worst case scenario, you can always defend it with f3, while d4 also opens a useful way for the white queen towards the black king. Bishop f6, what else? And a quiet but very strong move, rook g1. The white pieces are just quiet, quietly, slowly moving into attacking positions. Nakamura tries to create some counterplay, rook b8, attacking this pawn. But Karana understands that now he has so much control over the position that he can just take on a2, defend the b3 pawn, and the black attack is not really going anywhere because queen d5 runs into a huge family fork with knight takes f6 due to the pin. Nakamura tries bishop to h4, at least blocking the h file for now and preparing queen d5 since knight f6 no longer works. But Karana had it all figured out. He answered with rook to g4, attacking the bishop. Bishop, of course, can't really retreat. That would just be loss of time. After bishop f6, the white attack is lethal. For example, check queen f7, threatening all kinds of nasty things like queen g6, rook takes g7. Many things, many ways lead to Rome. c5, for example, rook takes g7, bishop takes g7, f6, threatening checkmate, rook g8, knight to g5, Threatening checkmate, h6, rook takes h6, bishop h6, and queen h7. Oops, not this one, but queen h7 is indeed checkmate. No surprise there. Instead, Nakamura tries queen to d5, threatening checkmate of his own with queen takes b3 and queen b1. But this leaves the bishop on priest, and Karana plays the easy to spot Zwischenzug c4, attacking the queen, defending the b3 pawn, when no matter what pawn this queen would take, queen takes d4 or queen takes f5. White would just take on h4 with an extra piece and an ongoing attack. Nakamura did not have to see that and therefore he did resign after c4. Very good game by Fabiano Carana, who, yeah, I believe played flawlessly, had probably done some very nice, very deep homework and just showed that the position with this mutual pawn race seems to favor White. The star plan, I think this is homework, but the idea to spend the tempo on bishop g5 to provoke f6, then to evaluate that this plan is fast enough, is very impressive. Modern chess, the execution was flawless as well. I'm not 100% sure where Nakamura went wrong. I think you probably have to start looking for alternatives quite early here. Investigate plans with c5, knight b8, knight c6, or maybe plans with knight to f8 as well. Practice will tell, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of this line, but for now an important victory for Fabiano Carana to get back into contention. He moves up to plus one to four and a half out of eight, and we're gonna look at the standings. If you don't wanna see them, switch off the video now, but I'm sure you do. Here we go. Sage Kayakin and Levon Aronian continue in the lead on five out of eight, or plus two, two wins, no losses. Sage Kayakin got extremely lucky or extremely tenacious, as he tends to be, against Peter Svidler, managed to save a bad, bad endgame, while Levon Aronian played an unspectacular draw against Anish Giri. Vishyanon also drew his game against Veselin. Topalov in the eighth round is still only half a point behind the leaders and is joined there by Fabian Karana. Those are the four players with a plus score. And we have Anish Giri, who drew all his games. Peter Svidler, who can't catch a break, just can't manage to win a game. No, it says one here, which is incorrect. I don't know why. He did not win that. He's on three and a half out of eight. <clears throat> Hikaru Nakamura also not having a great tournament. This one is once again misplaced, but the score is not. He does have three out of eight, three losses. Oh no, he did win again. Three losses, one win. And Veselin Topalov even worse on two and a half out of eight with three losses and no wins. So that's the situation in the Canada's tournament still Six games to play, so anything can still happen. Four players very close to each other at the top of the rankings. Stay tuned for more. Thank you guys for watching this video.